Okay, at this point, we've set up our dashboard, we've written our incredibly complex sum ifs formula to look for if votes match king and queen county write-ins for governor, add them up. But we tried to use the quick fill and say, well, if the votes match Cuccinelli for king and queen and governor, add them up. Same thing for McAuliffe, king and queen county governor, and Sarvis. But it didn't work. I tried to quick fill and I got zeros. If I double click this formula and try to examine it, you should almost instantly notice that something looks a little off. Why is B3 selected? Cuccinelli is selected. That looks good. Governor is selected because it's uh, merged and centered, kind of. This is definitely looking at something blank. So what's happening here? What is happening here is that we have used all relative cell references, which means when I transport my formula around, this reference here to dashboard A3 will move with it. Meaning if I copy this and I move it down here, or I move it over here, or I move it down here, everything that currently, notice where it's blue, purple, and red. As I move them down, they move with me. It's always two to the left, one up, two up. Two to the left, one up, two up. That's a relative cell reference. Sometimes that's exactly what you need. The way our spreadsheet is set up, however, it's not what we need. Let me remove these. What we need are some absolute cell references because if I move from cell C3, which is write-ins for governor for King and Queen County, to cell D3, which are Cuccinelli votes for governor for King and Queen County, some things need to change and some things need to stay the same. What's staying the same is King and Queen County and governor, but what's changing is who they voted for. Now we're looking at Cuccinelli. So we're going to need to use a mixture of relative and absolute cell references. So let me copy this formula over. We already know that we're going to get zero. If we try to edit it, Cuccinelli is right. So in this instance, dashboard D2 is correct, the purple. Our first option, our criteria one, the range is are they okay? Let's see. M, E, K, and L are the four ranges, our original sum range, and then our criteria range one, two, and three. Guess what? N, F, L, and M. Those were relative references too, meaning, oh boy, our entire formula is a little messed up. So we're not going to be able to quick fill the formula we currently have, which means we need to go ahead and edit our original first. If I want to always look at the same reference, I want to always absolutely reference this. The way to do that is with putting, uh, you put a dollar sign in front of the row and or the column. So if I change this to say dollar sign M, M, this means no matter where I move this formula, my sum range will always be original data, column M, total votes. Is that what we want? Yes, it is. We always want to add up votes. We don't ever want to add up effective dates or ballot names or congressional districts. We always want to add up votes. So we definitely want to use an absolute reference. Because we have selected an entire column, this is what the absolute reference for a column looks like. Dollar sign M colon dollar sign M. How about our next one? Do we always want our criteria range one to be original data column E? Column E is our locality name. Are we always concerned with our counties being located in column E? Yes. That's another instance where 
an absolute reference is going to be what we want. Criteria range 2 is column K. Is governor always located here? Yes, our ballot names are located always in the same spot. Because of the way our spreadsheet is set up, all of our criteria ranges are going to require absolute cell references. If I hit enter, we still see 22, which is good. That means that our new formula is working correctly. But note, every time you use some ifs, all of your sum ranges are not necessarily guaranteed to require absolute cell references. That's this particular example. If you had a different set of data, you might be using row references instead, and it would be different. Or you might need something that's more dynamic as you transport it, and relative references would be what you want. So we've made all of our cell reference, or excuse me, all of our range references, our sum range, criteria range one, two, and three, absolute. Did that fix our problem? We try to quick fill. No, we still get zeros. We still think that these probably should not be zero. So let's undo and see what else is wrong. Our ranges are absolute, but our actual criteria, what we're trying to match, uh, are not absolute. There's no dollar signs there. Those are still relative cell references. So that means as we quick fill this, things are moving with us. Did we want to move from right into Cuccinelli for our criteria three? Yes, we did. That is an instance where a relative cell reference is what we want. But did we want to move from King and Queen County to blank? No. So our blue or our criteria one needs to be absolute. If I add my dollar signs, no, actually let me not edit the one that's bad. Let's edit the one that is our original. Do we want to always refer to cell A3? Yes, we want to refer to King and Queen County even when I move this over. I still get zero. What's going on? Let's look at this. King and Queen County still. Good. Cuccinelli. That moved with us. But Governor. It looks like we're still on Governor because we've used the Merge and Center to combine this across four columns. But when you reference something that's been merged and centered, you need to use the first column. If I unmerge and center it, remember this is where it lives. Where does it originally live when it's not merged and centered? And that is cell C1, which means that this also needs to be an absolute reference. Aha! Now I think we're cooking with some gas. Is it likely that our independent candidate might not have had any votes in King and Queen County? Possibly. Remember, this is not the final tally. This was a snapshot. So at the end of the day, he could have gotten some votes. But in our original data, uh, it looks like he had not when this snapshot was taken. So let's double click in here and look at what we're actually looking at. King and Queen County, Cuccinelli, Governor. Awesome. King and Queen County, McAuliffe, Governor. Awesome. King and Queen County, Sarvis, Governor. Awesome. Well, now we should be good to go. Let's just, um, uh-oh, we're getting zeros again. Because guess what we did? We kind of got it right for our first row, but it's not as flexible as we need. Now we're still looking at King and Queen County, even though we want to be looking at King George County. We're still looking at governor. That's good. That one's right. But now we're looking at 22 instead of right in. So, unfortunately, 
We don't have it right yet. We've got one more step. If I edit my original formula, we need to use kind of a combination. Absolute versus relative cell references, they're not all or nothing which is what we've done here. We've either decided to A, use an absolute cell reference for both the column and the row or not. No dollar signs. But guess what? We can mix and match these. We can say always use absolutely refer to column A, but remove this dollar sign and be flexible with row three or vice versa. If I remove the dollar sign from in front of the A, and make it a dollar sign three. This means that I'm flexible with my column. You can move from column A to column B, but you're always going to refer to row three, no matter where you're at. So again, this is the four options. Let me type them here. We've got a three oh, dollar sign a three a dollar sign three, dollar sign a, dollar sign three. These are our four options. This is completely relative and this is completely absolute. In the middle we can have an absolute column but a relative row or we can have an relative row with an absolute column. Let me make these so those are our four options. You might want to pause the video here and just kind of take a look at that and make sure you understand where you're putting the dollar sign matters. It's not all or nothing. You've got very flexible options regarding that. So if I try to examine this again, we said that governor, we're always talking about governor. So it's okay for that to be dollar sign C, dollar sign one. Are we always talking about King and Queen County? Well, on this first row, yes, but when we move to uh, between row three and row four, no, then we want, so we want our rows to be flexible, but our columns, we always wanna talk about King and Queen County. Which option of these do we want to choose from? We want an absolute column, but a relative row. So that looks like this. How about our write-in? Do we always want to refer, how about our column, uh, to Write-in versus Cuccinelli versus blank versus McCulloch. Yes, we always want to be referring to the write-in. Do we uh, want to move up and down? Do we want to go between write-in and governor? And now these are our data. No. So this needs to be kind of the opposite. This we want to be flexible when we go from right in to Cuccinelli, but we don't ever want to get into our data. So that would look like this. If I hit enter, this is always good. We continue to see 22, meaning what we've changed in our formula has not changed what we're actually adding. Let's test and let's look here. We're still getting a number 437. We're still looking at King and Queen County because we made an absolute column reference and we haven't quick filled to a row. So we can't quite test this yet. We can only half test it. Governor still looks right and Cuccinelli. We've moved over there. That looks right. So it looks like our quick fill to the right to get King and Queen County has worked. Now let's, let's, let's test this out a bit. What happens? King George County. Well, we got a zero, but 
Are we still looking at King George County write-ins and governor? Yes, um, maybe there just weren't any. Let's two, zero, hmm. Let's fill the whole thing. One of the reasons that you're gonna possibly get confused is because this is a snapshot. It might not have made sense for there to be zero votes for McAuliffe in King George County and only two, King George is a pretty big county. But because this is not the and data set, this is a snapshot, my data is incomplete. If we go and kind of pick some of these and make sure that we are referring to the cells that we want, we can see that we are actually looking at the right data. New Kent County, McAuliffe, Governor. Just so happens that when this spreadsheet was recorded, there weren't any votes that matched that. Essex, McAuliffe, Governor, Northumberland, Sarvis, Governor. That is an incredibly complicated sum ifs formula in Excel with three criteria ranges that allow us to match, in this instance, a county, a candidate, and an office. If we wanted to have all of the possible offices and all possible um, names of people running for them in all counties across the state, this formula would be flexible enough to work for that. We would just need to fill in the rest of our column headers with We would need to fill in the rest of our column headers with the other offices and the other names and the other counties. And this formula is now flexible enough to be moved throughout the entire state, which is much more powerful than you having to manually add these up by hand.